Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of I Live For This podcast. And my name is Chantel Sparkles, and I'm here with my bestie. Trinity the Tuck. I call Shade. Yeah, she's representing. She's on brand. She's um, She is the moment. The moment. She is here. <laughs> So today, time. today we're going to be doing a podcast. Um, obviously, this is just our regular podcast where we ask each other questions. We go over, you know, current events and talk about random deaths. You know, just you know, normal stuff on a on a daily. Um, just normal stuff on a Tuesday. <laughs> it's very that we love talking about deaths on Tuesdays. Yes. Um, but just but real quick before we get started, make sure you guys are following us on Instagram. Trinity is. Trinity the Tuck on Instagram. What else is your other socials? Trinity the Tuck on Instagram. Um, you can follow me on TikTok at Trinity the Talk. Which is so clever. Well, I didn't come up with that. Actually, uh, really quickly, um, I had it as Trinity the Tuck. And then I got a message from Jan Sport. And she's like, girl, you should really change your handle to Trinity the Talk. I and I was live. like, oh my God, that's so... That's that's so genius. And so I did. So credit to her. Yes. Do you have any other uh, socials? Like, what about your Patreon? Um, You could just look under um, Trinity the Tuck on Patreon. And that is going to be where you can watch this podcast, uh, the video of it. And that money goes to help us edit, to pay to edit these these damn videos, bitch. Yes, honey, because we are over here working for free for y'all, so y'all Girl, better free. enjoy this shit. Free, honey. Right. For but free. you can also um, follow me on Instagram at Chantel Sparkles. Um, I think my Twitter is Chantel Sparks, if I'm not, not mistaken. I don't get on there because y'all bitches are nasty and hateful. Um, <laughs> so and then your hair page. You, you have and then, your of course, hair business. Yeah. My hair page is Glitter Bomb Wigs. That's my brand on everything. So if you guys need a wig, make sure you message uh, Glitter Bomb Wigs. Or they can go to your website at. Oh, yeah. And my website is Glitter Bomb Wigs as well. So check it out. On Glitter Bomb Wigs, we have uh, made to sell wigs constantly. So if you're in in need of a quick wig that's shipped, we ship the very next day once you place the order. And then also we have, we can do custom orders. And we also do. um, High quality shake and goes. Yeah. High quality shake and goes. So yeah, those are all the socials. So let's get started on the podcast. Let's start with our game here called Battle of the Bestie, where we ask each other questions and find out who wins the week. And I'm going to start with my first question to you. Okay. What is my coffee order? Not my not my coffee that I make at home, but my actual coffee order when I go to a coffee shop. Bitch, I don't even it's know my, this. It's my go-to coffee order. I would say, is it iced coffee? It is an iced coffee, but it's more specific. Girl, I don't even know. For me, it's just coffee as coffee. Yeah, well, they make all kinds of different coffees. Mm-hmm. Um, is it co- uh, iced coffee with an extra shot of espresso? No, no, it's not. What is it? It is a cold brew. Oh, I know this. I've seen you order it before. I like cold brews. What but is the bitch, difference like, between cold brew and I coffee? don't know. I don't know what the difference of cold brew is, but girl, I do know that once you have a sip of it, girl, because I get it like a grande, so it's like a the the medium size, and I don't even drink half of it. And girl, she got to go to the bathroom, sweetie. You you need to clean out, bitch. You get you a cold brew, sweetie. <laughs> yes, honey. Chantel, you used to. Order coffee. Yeah, I used to drink coffee so much. Like when I would wake up in the morning, I would have like three cups of coffee throughout the day and I wouldn't eat all day. And then one day I end up get I ended up getting a um a ulcer. Is it? A kidney stone. Oh, a kidney stone. That's right. From not drinking enough water because it was dehydrating me. Girl, that was the most painful, scariest experiences experience I've ever experienced. Period. It scared the shit out of me. I quit coffee, cold turkey. Wow. And you're over here like, Chantel, you want a coffee? You need a coffee? You want a coffee? I'm like, no, bitch. Well, what is uh, your first question? My first question is, 
Um, this one's kind of stupid, but it's kind of funny. If I was stuck on an island with you, okay, what would be my asset to survival for us? Oh, um, asset to survival. Like, what would I bring to the table for us? Well, first of all, I think that you would probably be fierce at making our, like, structure of where we sleep. Because you make props. And mm -hmm. so you, and, and you make things out of unconventional materials. So, bitch, I think you'd be getting, like, leaves and vines <laughs> and wrapping those those branches up to grow, together, girl. And it will be uh, airtight up in there, honey. Yes. It and sure would, baby. it would look good. It would look good, sweetie. It would look good. Would, you said it would look good. It would look, uh, it would good. look good, sweetie. She would look, she would look appropriate. She would, we would be in a mansion. It might be out of sticks, sweetie. But that wolf <laughs> ain't blowing no house down. <laughs> <laughs> bitch i live you know what though honestly i didn't even know what my asset would be but that's fierce <laughs> yeah i mean girl you do you make you make fierce props so you would have to be able to make some housings but you're also um under pressure you work really well under pressure so yeah. like survival i think you would you would not be that's why we get along you don't fr you you're not a freaking out kind of person like you when when like there is an actual issue that you have to solve you focus yeah you're right that's crazy that you say that because i literally just did this like spider wig for a client and i used to be one of those people where i would not take any kind of order that i was uncomfortable with because i just didn't want to fuck it up but right. now i've gotten to this point where i've got, where it's almost like sink or swim for me and sometimes i'll take the order on even though i can't do it just so that i can figure it out the the thing is though like you it, it, you don't do that as much anymore but like you should you shouldn't doubt yourself regardless because you yeah. you know you may not have ever made a certain style for but with the tools that you know how to do the things that you've done throughout your career girl you can make literally anything you'll figure it out oh yes you will even with the spider wig today like that's why i asked you if you'd seen it on before we started because i gagged myself i was like bitch i can't believe i made this like yeah, I don't know what the fuck I was doing, bitch, but I was like, we're just going to keep moving and we're going to keep doing whatever this is and it's going to happen. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, but girl, I am living <laughs> that part. <laughs> well, what would my what would my asset be? Um, I think you would be good at. Probably I could say making our clothes. Okay. You'd be good because you're good at sewing and you're good at like being creative and making things work. I think you could make our clothes. I think you could probably hunt uh, hunt for us. Oh, I was going to say down. Da Girl, I w whatever we have to do, bitch, yeah. I will. I will hunt her gatherer. Okay. <laughs> no, I really think because I'm thinking about it. You are very like ferocious when it comes to things. And I feel like in a life or death situation, you would be like, bitch, I'm going to eat this fucking, this squirrel. Oh, bitch. Bitch, we're going to have squirrel brains. We are going to have. I ain't eating squirrel brains. You went too far with that. We, girl, we, fried, we ain't on the Dragula review, bitch. Right, sweetie. Fried squirrel brains. Not Dragula. And, and we, we're going to have some worms, honey. I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna go in the, the ocean and catch a barracuda with my bare hands, sweetie. <laughs> a barracuda with a your barracuda, bare hands. A barracuda, sweetie. A barracuda, honey. Girl, those things live in the deep. You gonna swim out there? <laughs> I'm yes. Yes, I Girl, will. This is a mess. Just like you that remember that movie filter. Blue Lagoon or whatever it was? Blue Lagoon. What's blue lagoon is this filter on your face. It's blurry as fast. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what is going on with my camera. Um, let's see. My next question is um what did I weigh as a baby, like when I was born? Bitch, you trying to ask me to go back in time. Go back in time, sweetie. Go back in time to 1984. How, at what age? When I was born. Um, I so zero, say, bitch. <laughs> I would probably say one pound. What the fuck, girl? That would be like a like the most the smallest bean of a baby you've ever seen in your <laughs> life. Girl, you was a scanty legend when I saw you. Yeah, but you're you know, like normal babies are like 
six to eight pounds. Okay, I would say three pounds. Three pounds, three ounces. You got, okay. I'll give you that. You got yeah, that. Yeah, because I, what's crazy is um, me and Madison last night, we were up talking and she was sending me pictures of what y'all looked like years and years ago. And she had shown me a picture of you when you were like early drag days. Oh, yeah. Bitch, your motherfucking body was slender man down, honey. Skinny. Skin yeah, slender I was, bro, I, you know, I was skinny for years. Like I, I didn't gain weight for years and years and years and years and years. Yeah, you were skinny. Yeah, yeah there was no, uh, nothing I could you do. You had ass that. out the ass. Yeah, but that wasn't <laughs> that was that was after I had my body done. That I had no ass before. That's None. what I'm saying though. You were so skinny, and then when you saw your ass, it just looked like a dump truck on the back. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but three pounds three ounces. I was a month premature. I was so small. My grandmother had to cut the smallest baby diaper in half. Oh, wow. And there were no baby clothes that would fit me. So they had to go down to the gift shop and take a baby doll, like buy a baby doll. And I went home in the baby doll clothes oh because I gosh. wouldn't fit in any other clothes. That's kind of cute, though. Do you know what you weighed? No, to be honest, I don't even, I don't know. Were you a fat baby? Um, no, but I know that like as a baby, I was really pretty and everybody used to think that I was a girl. Well, what happened? <clears throat> girl, I don't know. <laughs> 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 but people used to always be like, is it, a, are you a boy or a girl? What's funny though is even in, uh, like throughout my kindergarten to like fifth grade, people would always ask me, are you a boy or are you a girl? Well, girl, ain't nothing changed now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what is going on with these kids? Like, these kids are over here talking about gender. Like, they know what the fuck that is. They don't. They don't. Uh, okay, what's your next question? My next question would be, how long does it take for me to get in drag comfortably? I would say an hour and a half. Close. I would say... I can do that. I think that an hour and a half is good, especially when me and you get ready together. I can get ready comfortably. But when I'm by myself and I'm just trying to like, you know, enjoy the moment, play around a little bit, two hours. Really? You like to take long. See, I hate the process of doing makeup. Yeah. I want it done and over with as soon as possible. So I'll be doing my makeup. I can do my makeup. This is not, this is not me getting dressed. This is just my makeup. I can, I do my makeup comfortably in 45 minutes. I can, I can get ready in 30 minutes though. But we can tell. We can I don't tell think so. when you I don't, ready that quick. I don't think so. I'm just kidding. I, I don't, I, <laughs> because for me. You took like, that for, so serious. No, well, the thing is, is like my makeup versus your makeup, there's a big difference because you do drag makeup. I feel like when I do drag makeup, I look more like a dude. Yeah, you definitely look pretty as fuck. Like when you go soft, for sure. Yeah. Like even I in the 666 like, music video, like you aren't wearing really any makeup. Mm -mm. And you look I so and I, and I don't. I don't really wear a lot of makeup because... The more I put on, the more I feel, oh, my God, you look like a dude. Yeah, yeah you look stunning when you go light. <clears throat> That's one thing that I need to practice on is I feel like the one thing that I like about my makeup is my from the nose up. Like the nose up always hits for me. But the cheek down sometimes I can go a little crazy with. Like my cheek contour t sometimes tends to come too forward to my lip. Mm. And that's like what... For me, when you do a cheek contour, what gives away, like, I guess too much drag makeup. Well, I guess there's not enough ever, but you know what I'm saying. When it comes too far here, yeah. I mean, I contour. when you cut a cut a thing, just bring it to here. Like, don't. Yeah, bring but I tend down. to get too crazy sometimes because I use a card to do my cheek, and then what I do is I buff it out. But sometimes when I'm doing it, the the brush comes too forward. Well, so you need to start using that Studio Fix powder foundation in your color to help blend that out and girl it will fix anything it's like an eraser also that uh charlotte tilbury finishing powder is freaking fierce did you get me that mm, i don't know it's in like know. a little gold compact oh no but you told me that about it next time we last time it's that we so did good together 
It's so good. But oh, also, yeah. something you taught me was that um, primer. Oh, that primer is the motherfucking tea. What is it called? It's called Tatcha. Tatcha. Yeah. It, girl, it really is. It For someone with like pores. textured skin, you know me, like I have dark, I have deep pores. So for me, I use it as my base. And then I, I always set my, uh, have you ever set yours? No, but I, I'm, I need to try that. Yeah, put it on your pores and then set your primer with powder. You know who I learned that from? Who? Plastic Tiara. Really? Yeah, she used to do a specific, it wasn't the Tatcha, but she would always do a primer and then she would set her primer with powder first so that the primer wouldn't move and it was almost like a first layer. Oh. And then you put your makeup on top and it looks like just porcelain. Oh, wow. Now, I wouldn't say I'm porcelain because I still have rough skin, but... <laughs> Girl, I think my, I think my dog farted, or he just shit on your foot. May, no, but he is sitting on my foot, but I think he farted on my foot. <laughs> Girl, Ew, it what's your next here. question? Oh, he stinks in here. It smells like you. Um, <laughs> okay, so my last question is, what was my first tattoo? Your first tattoo. If you can show me them, I can tell you which one. No. I have one of my. It was your pulse have, tattoo. So I hold on. I'm gonna tell you all my tattoos. I have a half crescent moon on my ankle. I have the pulse tattoo on my collarbone. I have this full sleeve of stuff, but this is all a bunch of different that came after. Tattoos. I have a dragonfly on my lo lower back, and <gasps> oh no no no, you got the dragonfly. Yep, that's what it is. Because I remember seeing when I first met you, you had a dragonfly. Yep, that was my first tattoo at the age of 18. And then the second one was your your pulse. No. It wasn't? Nope. My mm. second one was my star, my best friend star tattoo that I got with Billy. Me and Billy have the same tattoo. Oh, cute. Back when I lived in Birmingham. Mm. And um, then I got... Then I got the tattoo um, when we were on the the Arabic right here mm. when we were in Hollywood, remember? With yes. Andy Bell? Yep. Um, that says the name of the tour. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I got the Pulse tattoo. Mm. Cute. And then I got the Crescent Moon. And then I got all this other bullshit that's on my arm. Well, my question is, what would what do I now? I don't drink anymore, but when we'd go out to the girl, the gigs with the girls, mm -hmm. what would I order for for a cocktail? Oh, oh, I don't know. Uh, uh, a girl, I have no idea. I know that you would used to order the same thing I ordered when we were together, but a sex on the beach, no. I don't do sweet drinks because the sweetness of the drink uh, hurts my stomach. Oh, like a, a gin and tonic? Nope. A Jack and Coke? Close. Really? What? Yeah. What is it? Bacardi and Coke. Oh, that girl. That's so butch. <laughs> no, it's not. You're such that's a so bitch. butch. You looking lovely and you have a Bacardi and Coke. I don't like to drink sweet drinks because for some reason it don't sit well with my stomach. It makes my stomach hurt. Wow. That's why I don't really eat sweets either. When you're like, let's go get a milkshake or let's, I'm like, girl, I don't want to. My stomach's going to hurt. Well, looking at you, I would never be able to tell you don't like sweets. <laughs> yeah, I hate you. <laughs> you know what's crazy? Crazy. What? What's crazy? You're going to be crazy. over it. What? I just got Ozempic. You did? Yeah. From who? From, From where? Madison. Oh, you got this, not, not actual Ozempic. You got the stuff that she yeah. has. Yeah. So she, I was talking to her last night and um, I was just, her, her boyfriend that she is talking to used to work at a vitamin shop or what do yeah. you call it? And um, she was on the phone with him while we we're playing video games. And I said, Madison, do you know anybody that is a dietitian? Cause I'm tired of being fat. And she was like, well, um, I don't know. Have you tried this? And then she's like, oh my God. I'm literally talking to somebody that used to work at a vitamin shop. So we talked to him and stuff and he was giving me options. 
And I was like, I don't want to do all this. I don't want to have to count my calories. I don't want to have to do this. I don't want to have to eat protein, do all this fucking work. Just give me fucking Ozempic. So, yeah. She well, you got to let me know how this concoction is that she is peddling around, honey. Girl, I'm kind of scared. It's, it's, it's probably Drano, honey. She's <laughs> she's just rebottled it, sweetie. I live. <laughs> but uh, you had to let me know because, girl, you know, she is she almost said, 40, honey. Huh? She said that she lost 27 pounds in like a month. Well, I lost my keys. But that don't mean uh, it's well, healthy. She's, take, right. <laughs> she's taking no zip. Listen, oh, zip, sweetie. All right. Well, is that all of our questions for yeah, think so. Battle of the Bestie? Well, I got none of those right. And, and I think I got one of yours. You got two of them right. Well, so, the first one, and you, I was wrong. And then you're like, try again. Well, both of them were like that. Yeah, so I, but yeah. you're being a good Christian woman and let me. Yeah, but you, but you, in, but you, but you normally we give people three chances. So you did, you got two right. Oh, okay. I didn't so know you are the winner of one. Battle of the Bestie. Yes, I'm a fan. But we're going to move on to our next segment, Bestie Breakdown. And this is just a general conversation questions that we just have that we both answer. So uh, the first one is, uh, we're both going to answer is what's something you're scared of? of that people wouldn't expect um i'll go first okay something that i'm scared of that people wouldn't expect i don't know if it's i'm like necessarily scared but it's a phobia um i don't know if this is the right term maybe somebody in the comments can let me know but i get something that's similar to claustrophobia when mm. i'm in a room like like say in a dressing room and there are a lot of empty chairs near me, like near yeah. my legs. I get, I get claustrophobia. Like I, it's it weird. I don't know what it is. I I, get, I know that that's true though, because you've always said that around me. Yeah. If if I'm in a dressing room and that like there's hardly anybody in there, and there's a bunch of empty chairs like close to me, I I have to move them away. Yeah. There, it's just it, it it I don't know. It's something. It just really freaks me out. I get anxiety and I can't. What about you? Mine would probably be. Heights. I don't like heights. Yeah, but I'm talking about something that's unusual. Uh, Not <laughs> heights are heights are like um everybody's scared of heights. Yeah, but I'm terrified. Okay, well something else. Pick Mine, something that's unusual. Um, probably bugs. Okay, that's that's also not another. That's another usual one. Girl, not freaking chairs around my legs. Yeah, but claustrophobia are, like, is a fucking common thing too. No, not no, not like that. Not like not chairs. Okay, everybody in the comments, if you're listening and you think that claustrophobia is something I don't know common, if that's what it's called. Like I'm just saying that's what it is. But I'm talking about chairs close to my Please leg. Please comment and let us know. So you you tell me another thing that you're scared of that w is not common. You stupid bitch. Um. I would say I'm scared of failure. Girl, That's something I, that really like haunts me. Sometimes. I'm scared that you only have three brain cells left, bitch, because you're clearly not <laughs> comprehending that all of these things that you're you're saying are are very common. Yeah, very but you would never. I don't think you would ever think that because I work so much. And everybody I'm, would think that. God, Everybody's please. scared of failure. Mm, You've already failed. <laughs> you failed this challenge. Goodbye. Yeah, you, you, you definitely filled this first question. All right. The next question that we're going to answer is, when was a time you were overly brave? Mm. When I was overly brave? Yeah. I would say... That's a good question, because I'm never brave. Um, you answer first while I'm thinking. Overly brave, overly brave, overly brave. Oh, that's a good question. That is a good question. Um, I'm trying to think of if, if I have I ever saved someone's life. I probably, I mean. I'm definitely one of those people. I don't know if it has to do with a time frame. But I'm definitely one of those people where I, I will stand up for somebody when they're being bullied or if they're in danger. Mm -hmm. No, will. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? 
So like if something is happening and I don't agree on it, I'm always that person that would be like, that's not cute. You need yeah. to stop. And I think that's a time. That's a, that's a good thing. I know what mine is. Okay. So years ago when I still lived in Birmingham, um, I think I was like 21, something like that. I was um, planning to move to Los Angeles. With I never had visited Los Angeles, but I I knew in my heart at the time I wanted to do makeup for movies. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm going to move there and I'm going to become a, a famous makeup artist in movies. So in order to save up money, because I was like a broke 21 year old, um, I moved in with my sister um, to save up a couple of months worth of bills so I could move. Mm -hmm. And um, while I was there, she was she was like kind of in a tumultuous relationship with this with, the, with her husband at the time and um and it just was crazy so like i they they would fight a lot not physically but they would like yelling and stuff well one day i was working at the club and i got home really late like i don't know like 3 a.m. I pull into their driveway and there is a cop car with my brother-in-law handcuffed in the back seat. Yeah. And the cop was like, you can't go in, you can't go in, you can't go in. I was like, what is happening? What is happening? And my brother-in-law screaming, don't believe them, don't believe them. And I was like, what is happening? And they're like, you just can't go in. It's a crime scene. I was like, oh my God, where's my sister? And he yeah. was like, I can't give you any details. All I can say is you need to go to this hospital and, and, you know, that's all I can tell you. So I rushed to the hospital and come to find out that my sister had fallen out of the second story bedroom. Oh, you had told window, me about this. And she broke every bone in her back. And apparently, like, she doesn't have a memory of it. But Gag. the cop said, the cop told her that they had enough evidence they could have charged him with attempted murder gag and because she didn't remember anything she was like no i'm not gonna do that blah blah, blah, blah. you know that battered woman syndrome kind of thing and so like she's in her, she's like finally able after like a week in the hospital surgery girl they had to put like all kinds of pins all down her spine they finally send her home <clears throat> and she's in a full like cast, like plastic cast of her back and everything. Like she can't move. Like she, it's oh like, God. it's like a full thing. Like you, when she moves, like it's her whole body moving, yeah. um, but she can barely do that. And she's got like drains, like draining from like the surgery. And it's just, it's just all just a lot. Very cumbersome. She's very uncomfortable. She's in a lot of pain. Like she almost died. So she gets back to home and obviously like I'm taking care of her whenever I'm not working, um, all that jazz. Well, we get to uh, like a couple of weeks out from that and they're arguing again. Now, mind you, I didn't get too much into their business. She didn't tell me too much. She was very private with what was going on. But apparently, they were starting to argue because she found out he was cheating on her. Mm. And she found out that the girl he was cheating on her with was pregnant. Gag. And so she goes crazy off on him she's still in her back brace mind you her back is still broken and healing she's going ballistic he's yelling at her next thing i know i come downstairs or, or no no not come downstairs i come out of the room that i'm in and he has her on the staircase by her neck oh off the ground and like this dude is like six four like 230 pounds like muscular like like built i i'm like a twink like think back what those pictures were that's what size i was yeah i like go up to him i'm starting to like beat on his back and stuff like that like not doing much and he's not doing anything he like pushes me he puts her down but he's like you know in her face and i'm like i'm calling the police 
I get my phone. I, I call 911. And as soon as I call 911, he grabs his keys and jets it like he's out of there. Yeah. And he goes, I don't know where he goes. So the cops come. They do a, a police report, whatever, whatever, whatever. She gets a restraining order. So he doesn't um, have access to come back into the house at all. And like that was kind of the end of it till they got a divorce and all that jazz. But that was probably like overly brave moment. That's crazy. Yeah. I feel like the only, I mean, the thing that I could think of was like the, um, there's two brave moments. So when you asked me to move to Kentucky, to Louisville, that was mm-hmm. very um, brave to me because I think so. I th- I can agree with you because you ha- you are very weird about uh, making risky moves. Raking, yeah, making risky moves and also like leaving my family because at the time I was really close with them, and I I had never lived out of state. Yeah. So when you asked me to move to L- to Louisville, I was really scared, but I did it, and I think. That's one of the best moves I could ever have because that's what led me to winning EOI. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, that's what let you were on cast. So it really taught you what it meant to be polished and work in a, like that kind of environment, which then in turn got you on cast at play, which was a big deal yeah and um really helped you grow as an artist and as a person and all that kind of stuff and then yeah because i feel like also at the time whenever i was working on cast with you at connection i still didn't really know who i was as an entertainer i was still trying to like learn your skills and then apply them to how i wanted to be but when i got on um, cast at play that's where i like you said i formed Chantel and who i yeah because i was no longer in the picture so you had to rely on yourself yeah i had to sew my own looks and figure out what i wanted to wear so yeah. that was probably a, a brave time. And then I will say the second brave time was when COVID hit and mm-hmm. play play um fired me. You remember when yep. play fired me? Yep. And that was during COVID. And I couldn't get any more unemployment. For some reason, unemployment um rejected me after I got fired from them. And I was at a point in my life where I couldn't work, I had no money. And I had you still just had to pay bills. Yeah, I had still had to pay bills. And I had just moved to Louisville. Remember, I had just moved back to Louisville to be on cast at play and everything. So when they did fire me and that happened, it was like the rug had been taken out from underneath me. And I had to work sink or swim. Life, sink or swim. Like I had to make it work and get back into doing hair full time. And that's how I created glitter bomb wigs because You know, before doing drag, I was always a hairstylist. Mm -hmm. So I used that to my advantage and created this, this that I have now. But that, I feel like that was a very brave moment because that was scary to have your livelihood just taken from you like that. Cause you know, I had moved to Louisville to be a drag queen. Yeah. And then they're like, no, just kidding. Yeah. I think, I think both of those are great examples. Yeah. Because you, you are, you're very, you're, you're very much the type of person once you get into a groove, you're kind of set in your way. Yeah, for and sure. And you don't, you're not a, you're not a, um, you're, you're a creature of habit. You don't like change like that. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the last question that we're going to answer is what's been your biggest disappointment? It could be anything. Okay. Your biggest disappointment. My biggest disappointment would probably not be casted on Drag Race yet. Mm. Just because that's something that, you know, I have worked so hard. Girl, I have been, I've been auditioning for Drag Race since I guess I met you before yeah. I met you. And so the fact that like there has been so many seasons and I have not been considered yet is just, it's crazy to me because I feel like it's a given. Like I've devoted so much and it's not even just because I feel like I'm deserving at this point. I feel like I've just worked so much and stuck to it. Yeah. That that right there shows that it's a passion of mine. Yeah. So I feel like that, but I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, I think that that is that that's something that could be very disappointing for a person for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I think also another thing that's disappointing is not being close with my family anymore. Yeah. Because of like just 
it feels like we've gone backwards because like before all of this political shit had happened with Trump, my parents and my family was so close with me and they, they love drag. They supported me and everything and was all about it. But for some reason, since drag has become such a monster to society, yeah. they are seeing in a whole different manner. And it's just weird because you'd think that their own, they would trust their own son has that has traveled the world with drag and bought a house with drag and create a sustained life with drag that they would trust that, mm -hmm. but they don't. So that to me is very disappointing too. Yeah. What's yours? Um, I would say my biggest disappointment probably would be family. Mm -hmm. uh, um, like, like a lot of my, and not just, not just one person, it would be a lot of people. Like it would be, a lot of my um, aunts and um, people that were really um, like in my kind of immediate family. Yeah. Um, when all that stuff happened with my grandmother getting sick and um, like one of my aunts, she, she came and stayed with us to take care of her because I was in school and um my grandfather had to work he, he in order to keep her insurance he had to work there was nobody else and um at the time we i mean like period not at the time but just in general we couldn't afford we were pretty poor we couldn't afford yeah. a caretaker so uh we had one of my aunts which was my grandmother's daughter her actual mm -hmm. daughter come and stay with us to take care of her and um we found out that she was stealing medicine Stop. and uh from my grandmother and one day we we uh i came home from school and my grandmother was like left unattended and at this time she was like in so much pain she was on morphine and, and morphine is no joke it like makes you like if you oh, if, trust I've if been you're on it strong enough yeah it makes you like where you don't know where you're at and yeah. At the time, my grandmother was like pretty far into her cancer where she was in a she was bedridden. Yeah. And so she was left in the bed by herself for who knows how long I got home from school and my aunt was nowhere to be found, could not find her. She was not answering her phone, could not find her in the house, could not find her in the yard. Nowhere, nowhere, nowhere. Yeah. Called my grandfather. He left work, rushed home. We're looking everywhere girl everywhere my grandfather goes walking into the woods because our backyard was into the woods yeah in several yards into the woods into the forest we found my aunt passed out over a stump so she was like high on meds that she just passed out she was so high off of morphine that she stole from my grandmother that was she, did she give off that vibe that she was like a pill popper? Yes. So a lot of my so my I was very fortunate that I was raised by my grandparents. Neither one of them did substances like that. Yeah. But other people like their it's like my birth like family. my birth mother, she was a drug addict. That's why I went and lived I like straight from the hospital, went and stayed with my grandmother. Mm. And my Aunts, my other two aunts that are my mother's sisters and my grandmother's daughters, all three of them just did. They were drug addicts. Was your and mother then, like, um, what kind of drugs was your mother into? Uh, I mean, was it like I, pills or was it like different drugs? Everything, everything. You, she have you ever had some type of like, um, temptation or anything no. that has to do with it? Because you know, no. how sometimes it runs in the blood. No, I, I, um, I was so because I was brought up around all of that with all these people that were on drugs, except for my my grandparents that raised me and my sister, that we we saw what those what drugs do to you. Yeah. And I just did not I didn't smoke. I didn't drink. I didn't do drugs. I didn't do anything. I didn't I didn't even try weed until much later much later because girl you wouldn't even do it around me and now you're the mother of the brothel with it 
Well, only edibles. Yeah. I but, like them. And, and, and I've never done any other drug. Like, weed is the only thing I've ever done, still to this day. Um, but, yeah, so that was very disappointing. Um, I couldn't imagine. And like, she um, literally left your grandma. Yeah. And so what we ended up having to do is right now. I that Definitely. that that night we decided she was kicked out. She had to go back home. Yeah. And uh, wasn't allowed back. And I had to quit high school and enroll myself into homeschool to finish out my last two years of high school. Did you um, finish? Yeah, I graduated. I grad. I have a diploma and everything, but I had to do it myself while I was taking yeah. care of my grandmother because we didn't That's have another very option. Very powerful because, like, it takes a lot to do homeschooling. Yeah, well, we we didn't have another option, so so that was bestie breakdown. And now we're gonna get into a couple of other topics uh, and move on from there. So the first topic, briefly, I want to talk about is they just announced that Drag Race is going to South Africa. So now I believe there is a drag race on every continent except for Antarctica. Gag, really? Yeah, I think so. That's fucking sick, bitch. It's like Pokemon. They got different regions. Literally, literally. Um, which I'm really excited about because South Africa is, uh, Cape Town specifically in South Africa is my favorite place on earth. Yeah, that's what and you're telling me. I have several uh, drag friends from there, uh, from when I toured there, and then also that movie Slay that I filmed with yes. Heidi, Carmel, and uh, Crystal. We filmed that in South Africa, so I got to. Spend, How long did you stay there? Uh, for that, we stayed for a little over a month. So gag, it was it was just so fantastic to to be around locals and, um, oh my god, girl, my dog like. Farting the house do you down. <laughs> do you think that um do you think uh there's a lot of queens in South Africa that do drag? I don't know. What what I'm hoping is is that they do kind of what they do for down under, where they they have queens from New Zealand and Australia compete. Yeah. So maybe they'll have other queens from other African countries. Um, also included. That would be fucking because weird. I know that a lot of um African countries, it's not okay to be gay, so they probably would never have a drag race. And so South Africa is very westernized, so mm. it's it's a lot more safe for queer people. Yeah. And um, so it would be fantastic if they had um other queens from other African countries compete. Yeah, too. that would be. Sick. But Especially I mean, I, that culture. Yeah, yeah. But I have no idea um, what what that will look like, or who the host would be, or um... you know, some people were talking in the groups because um, I follow a couple drag race groups, and a lot of people are saying they want BB. That would be fierce. Yeah, that would be fierce. That She'd would be, be good. Fierce. You know, BB has personality, bitch. Yeah, and she's wow. the original. The yeah. original. The original um so um another topic i want to talk about we haven't really talked too much about this on the pod and i just want to remind people um if you haven't checked out um my latest song called six six sex which features you Chantel, yes. and then my other drag daughter some sam star and then your drag daughter jewel, jewel sparkles, sparkles. Um, that is out now. You can go watch the music video on YouTube and you can listen to the song wherever you listen to your music. Also, that's on my deluxe album of um, Cinematic Deluxe, which has 16 tracks total. Gaggy. Uh, so Ain't no other drag race girl doing all this. So please go support that. It's um, such a great Especially project. Especially this caliber. It it costs a lot of money to do music and music videos. So if you could go just listen, watch, like, subscribe, that that costs you nothing and it really does help out. So please do check that out. Speaking of 6 6 um, did you have any more else, any, anything else to say no, no, about no, no, it? No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Girl, so I just wanted to give a little like story. So when we were getting ready to go film um, out in the desert, Trinity 
is like rushing for us to get out there. And we got, of course, Jules, Sam and you all in the car. And we were supposed to get gas on the way out. Oh, my God. (laughs) And we were like, we were feeling our O's. We were feeling ourselves. We were in drag. We were excited. We were listening to music. Yeah, because, you know, we never get the family all together. So all of us in the car, we were we were kicking. We forget to get gas and we're already headed into the desert. And this yeah, is a two-way girl, there's street. no going back. There's no going back, Katy Perry. No, bitch. It's a two-way no. street, and the one way is one way, sweetie. Girl. <laughs> and um, and we're like, okay, maybe there's a gas station a little further. Maybe there's a little gas station a little further. Girl, there's no signal. We're on E. We're not just saying we're out of gas. It's on E. We're on e. e. There, it is not saying how many more miles we have. It's there's no that. service. So, like, girl, if we break down, girl, oh, yeah, we, we had no service. Bus. It was girl. very much Hills Have Eyes energy. Jeepers Creepers, sweetie. Jeepers cre- girl, Jeepers Creepers, sweetie. Bitch, all we needed was it to get dark and us run out of gas. Girl, I would have flipped. I would have came unglued. unglued. And then also, we were driving, and we started seeing signs of boulders coming down. And I, while we were driving, I said, I hope a bulger doesn't fall down. And Jules goes, a vulture? And I was like, a vulture. And they're like, it's called a bulger. And I was like, you know what I mean, bitch. I don't want to die from a A boulder. Yeah, a boulder. I just said that. Yeah, but you were calling it a bulger. I know, a bulger. A bulger. I can't believe it. (laughs) That was a funny time. That was funny. Also, um, uh, off that topic, I want to remind everybody that early voting has started for most of you in the state. So if you haven't early voted, make sure that you go out uh, on election day. It's super important. Every vote counts. So our next topic is a former Bachelor contestant, Josh Theater. I don't know if that's how you say his name, but that's what I'm saying. Admits to um, basically being fake trans. There was oh, this- yes, I heard about this. Yeah, there was this guy who was like coming out with these like videos of being trans and like, but the thing is like he was very masculine presenting, like hairy, very, very muscular. And, yeah, and and not not really doing like the full on shebang, like not shaving, thing. yeah, not doing the yeah. most, right? And um, so he was getting a lot of support from like the left, but also. A lot of hate too because people read through it um Mm. but then he was also getting a lot of hate from conservatives because he already had a kind of a big fan base yeah and uh, so basically he supposedly made all this up to show how stupid like liberals are or whatever um to me it's just it's just kind of weird that you would go that far to try to like prove that the left is weird or whatever i don't know it just it makes him look stupid for me he just feels i feel like first off he also faked his death i don't know if you heard about that yeah and he's been known for being problematic by like doing these scenarios for attention and stuff um if i'm not mistaken he did also date gia gun and that was like a whole thing where like I, I don't know exactly the truth behind everything that would happen, but they had a falling out as well. Mm. And to me, it just seems like he's one of those people that just wants to, wants attention and he's willing to do whatever, he, whatever it takes to yeah. stay in the limelight. Which, okay. But if, if this is like what conservatives want to point out as like their value is that they that this is what they are like they they're so all over the place on how they show themselves like they're so very hypocritical none of this none of their actions of the people that are claiming to be christian are very christ like they're not acting christian none of it none of it and the thing is is like him acting trans or whatever whenever i came across it i was like that's odd but at the same time like it ain't my business i ain't that worried about it i am not that invested in your life if that's what you want to do you want to wear dresses and 
and transition or say you're trans and not shave and and still wear lipstick and big earrings and no wig girl you that's do how i was when it i ain't saw my business page, i don't care page. i don't care it ain't my business mm -hmm. when so i the saw their page is, like, i just kept it moving. just makes him look weird because girl i don't i don't care that's the same thing with like all these people claiming oh the um one of the democrats from new york is getting indicted for doing wrongdoings in new york and what do y'all have to say about that good democrats the the left do not worship democrat leaders like the maga worships trump we just yeah. don't and we if somebody on the left is doing something wrong lock them up that part i'm not part of a cult i'm not following these people blindly and it's just so weird it's like girl nobody cares that much live yeah. your life live your life if you want to wear lipstick and and hairy chest and big earrings and in a dress girl you do you at the end of the day i don't care i yeah. just don't care if you want to worship donald trump you do you but don't put that in my face don't do you bitch if you supporting donald trump no that that's fine don't it's do only, you as long as you don't as long as you don't use that to uh take away my rights which is what they're doing yeah but I was as, long say, as, you, as long as you don't do that if you want to worship him like he's jesus christ of latter-day saints you go right ahead sweetie you yeah, go but the right thing ahead. is is like no matter what the heat they are so it was weird yeah Did it's you just a weird situation where one of the actresses from the new uh wicked got so upset that fans yes. redid the poster it was her name is uh cynthia arivo and she plays she was getting alcohol. really mad and she was like so mad i know like, basically saying yara like erasing me as as a human and to me i was like girl all girl, they it's not that serious they're literally just making it look like the other poster yeah it was a trying to show homage doing it like the the original broadway poster like girl calm down it ain't that she's serious. on the defense it was just weird it was she needs to calm weird. down that was weird too yeah it ain't that deep it ain't that deep. people ain't and my thing is it's like bitch you are already in the limelight you know what I mean? You about to have the ride of your life. Why are you so worried about well, all bro, these people it that wasn't are saying these things? Anything negative. That That's wasn't what I'm even saying. negative. Like, it's why like, are you bro, so worried? If you think that this is something that you are going to be worried about, wait till the movie comes out, bitch. Because when the movie bro. comes out, there's going to be even more fan art. There's going to be more haters. There's going to be people that are probably didn't like your role and say, oh, well, you know, this person from Broadway or whatever was better. So it's yeah. like, you need to stop being so worried about the peanut gallery and worry about you, boo. It was, it was really strange. Um, another thing about uh, Wicked, I saw somewhere that Cynthia, who plays Elphaba, uh -huh. she, I think she got paid like a million dollars for her role. Yeah. Ariana Grande got paid like 14 million. And uh, Cynthia is the main character. Speaking can you, of her, girl, I got some tea to tell you after this. But can you imagine you being the main character and you getting paid $13 million less than I your- I would be pissed. Girl, completely. Pissed. So That's wait a minute. Who got paid the $1 million? Cynthia. Alphabet. You're, you're kidding. From where I read, unless I'm wrong- you Girl, that's fucking, that's very sus. Yeah. Very sus. I mean, I know it's $1 million and great, but. Yeah, but girl, nowadays as an actress, like you got so many things that you got to pay your publicist. You got to pay for, you know, all these things that you got to do for like attending events. You know? Yeah, girl, that, that ain't paid, nothing. They don't get paid to uh, go to the. Maybe uh, that's why she's lashing out on these people, because she might feel like it has to do with race. I don't know. It's just but, weird. That right? is weird. It, it's it really, very it, sus. It is very. You know weird. what's also crazy though? Speaking of Ariana Grande, did you hear about that that um article or that like new video that just came out that has to do with Elvira uh, spilling some tea? I was actually just gonna say that. Yeah. Oh, uh, work. Yeah. Tell us the tea. Well, um, apparently years ago, like eight or nine years ago or something like that. 
Elvira said she encountered Ariana Grande and that Ariana Grande was the worst celebrity interaction she's ever had. She was so yeah, rude. She was saying that she had, it wasn't like she's supposed to be on her show, right? Yeah. Yeah. So she's supposed to be on her show and Ariana Grande wound up having like 20 of her family members show up and she made Elvira do the, um, like a, basically like a mini meet and greets with Ariana Grande's family. And she signed all, she asked her if she would sign all their autographs, take pictures with each family member, yada, yada, yada. And then at the end of everything, Elvira was like, hey, Ariana Grande, can I take a picture with you? And Ariana was like, no. With no, ex really no valid excuse. And then after that, she left early from the show and left all her family members there for her. Well, Ariana Grande came back and said, from her recollection, that did not happen. Yeah, and did you see I, the comment? She remembers something else. If she did do that, she apologizes to me. She I don't didn't know apologize, what... though. Did you see the comment that she said? What did she say? Girl, I wish I would have screenshot it. But she basically said that she don't really remember that happening and that it's kind of sad that she's acting like this because her mom was a fan, but she doesn't know after this. It was weird how she brought her mom into it and like tried to make her feel like shit. And she said that she don't really remember. And she didn't, she, the way that she had apologized didn't sound like she was taking full accountability for it. It was almost like, well, I don't remember. And I'm sorry you feel that way. And you know, see, this is the thing. I don't know what the truth is. I'm sure it's somewhere in the middle, but I'm a huge Ariana Grande fan as far as her music goes. Me too. But. There over the years, there's been so many things that come has come out, like with her licking the donut. And I don't even know what that is. Oh, girl, like years ago, apparently, like there was this like donut shop that caught Ariana Grande licking do their donuts. Why? And something to do with like shaming people for I, I, I'll have to look into it. Yeah, we'll but, have to talk about that. But um, yeah, she was it was like a big controversy, but like. She did that and she's like, um, th this thing here. And then like, apparently like still in that, that husband from that wife. Yeah. I mean, I don't know the full story of that either, but there's just so many things. It's like, girl, she's a freaking brat. Yeah. She's a brat. I was also, I, I was also reading, cause I, I started going down the rabbit hole about this in the comments. You know, you always got to read the comments, girl, see what's going on. So a lot of the people also were saying when that all happened with Elvira, that she probably could be acting like the way that she did was because right around that time, that's when the bombings were happening. And that one bomb bombing happened at her concert and she mm -hmm. was going through severe PTSD and like she was going through it. But I, she even said in a comment from what someone said that that was the reason, but it's like, for me, yeah, but you know me, I have bad anxiety when it goes around people, when I, when it goes to being around big crowds of people or people in general, and so for me, though, even if I have anxiety, I don't use that as a crutch to be. You don't use it as an excuse for yeah, things. Yeah, I don't be disrespectful people and be like, no, you can't have a big. I've had but people, that's just like, so weird is that she, Elvira went out of her way to accommodate Ariana Grande's her, family. Yeah. And she couldn't even like give her the time of day for a photo. Again, I don't know. The, the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. It, there, yeah. it, it, it's, uh, that's the saying. There's uh, what they said, what the other person said, and what the truth is, which yeah. is somewhere in the middle. And so, who knows? Um, it's definitely very sus. Just like all the of whole this, one just seems like 14. privilege to me. Regardless, like it's yep. all privilege. It's all privilege. It's all privilege. Yep. Um, but speaking of privilege, I um was contacted today. By you know um the actor Cooper Koch, who no. played in that the new Menendez brothers oh bitch. TV show, the hot one with the curly hair. Oh, he's so fucking fine, bitch. Well, you know he's a twin. He has a twin brother. Oh, he does. Yeah, and his twin brother is like a producer or something like that. Well, um, I I don't think Cooper has an Instagram or at least a public one. Yeah, that. I don't think he does either. But I started following his brother on um, Instagram and I got a message today from his brother, Peyton, 
gag. And he was like, hey, I, um, me and Cooper are such huge fan of fans of yours, and um, we would love to collaborate for Halloween. Um, we have done drag every Halloween for the past couple of years, and he sent me some pictures, which were really funny. But we've never done your caliber of drag, and we would love for you to um, help us reach that goal. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I would love to do that, obviously. Um, one, because they're beautiful. Two, just because that would be such a, a cool thing to say I did. Yeah. But um, I'm booked uh, already, so I can't. And oh, so I was like, let me help you find somebody in LA to help you. So I reached out to a couple of uh, local girls there um, and we're going to get them all done up for that. But that's a, that's a cool connection. Is, that is cool. But what does this have to do with privilege? You said, speaking of privilege. Cause I had the privilege of talking to him. Oh, <laughs> So we have a couple of weird deaths. There's three of them. The first one is in 1988, a dog fell from a building in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and landed on a woman's head, killing her and the dog instantaneously. Then another lady, completely confused watching the events unfold. She was in the middle of the road and was run over by a bus. <gasps> Oh my then, God. Then, shortly after that, an older man died from a heart attack out of the commotion of seeing both deaths. And this happened within a couple of minutes. So, three people and a dog died at three different things, all connected from the same event. I'm gagged. Isn't that crazy? Girl, they are not lying when they say it's raining dogs and cats, bitch. Girl, hello. <laughs> that is crazy. Poor dog. I know. I wonder <laughs> why the dog fell out of the building. Damn. The next uh, crazy death is drowning in the desert. A guy got caught in a box canyon. Got caught in a box canyon. I don't know what that means. In a box canyon. During a flash flood. The water was quickly reabsorbing into the dry desert soil and left a drowned man in the middle of the desert. So basically it was a desert. There was a flash flood that just came through and drowned the man because he was trapped. Then the water was absorbed and left the dead man's body. Those Isn't are that random. Crazy? I wonder why it, it just like rained so heavy that time. Well, I don't know if it, it, the flash flood could have been from like a river overflowing or maybe because there are some deserts that meet the ocean maybe like there was a a way like a tsunami or something i don't know yeah but um yeah but yeah he drowned in the middle of the desert that's just so crazy to me that's a crazy death and then the last <laughs> one is a woman named Jennifer Strange died of water intoxication while she was trying to win a Wii. A radio station had a, con a contest called Hold Your Wii for a Wii, where you had to drink as much water as possible without going to the bathroom. She drank nearly two gallons of water and ended up dying. So you, you can die from station, water poisoning. Yeah. The, the radio station's parent company paid over $16 million to her family in damages. Damn. Girl, over holding your pee, bitch, drinking all that water. I couldn't imagine. Like, That's why I don't like no Aquafina, sweetie. You ain't getting me, honey. <laughs> okay? I'll, ha I'll have a, a, a swig of a, a water bottle, but you ain't getting me, bitch. I ain't going to get no water intoxication, okay? That's just so weird to me. If I was going to get intoxicated, it's going to be by some wine or alcohol, okay? <laughs> <laughs> At yes. least if I die with that, I'm going to feel good, sweetie. Yes, God. Well, um, that is our crazy deaths of the week. And lastly, to finish up this podcast, is our I Call Shade moment. Bitch, you already know my I Call Shade. Tell me. So I had just hired this girl as a an assistant stylist at Glitter Bomb Wigs. She had worked for me for almost about three or four weeks. And this past Friday, she just got up and left, walked out. Wow. 
didn't say bye, didn't say nothing. And I was like, what the fuck had just happened? And my other stylist, that was the, the Callie, my other assistant, she was there the whole time. And she's like, I don't know what just happened. Like, it literally was like from this to this. And she just left. And what was the reason, like, what caused that to even be a thing? So she wound up, she, so you know me, I'm very, I'm very, very strict on time. Yeah. Like, if you say you're going to do something, you got to do, do it. it. Right. And if you're going to be on time, be on time. And so she was, I guess, running, she was running late and um, texted me three minutes before she was supposed to even be in the door. And mm. she's like, hey, I'm running late. And I was like, that's fine. We can talk about it when you get here. She texts me back again. And she's like, I'm going to be late because I overslept. And I was like, that's the worst excuse to tell me three minutes before you're supposed to be here. Yeah. So three anyway, minutes. Right. You ain't giving me no time to soak in that you're going to be here. Or yeah. be late. So she gets in and then she's like, immediately like asking for coffee. Immediately like trying to get trying to wake up and stuff and i'm already annoyed because i'm like bitch you your priority shouldn't be coffee your priority should be get your ass in here get your set your situation set up so we can get you to do hair because i've been because you only have her because you were telling me you only have her like oh yeah days a week or something i only get her on fridays and so the friday that she came she was late and i was like how are you going to be here once a week and be late yeah you know what i mean like you know all week that you're coming so plan for that. Now, I yep. will say, when she came in, she started, you know, being frazzled. She was trying to get coffee, trying to get situated. And then we were doing hair. And before she had got situated, I had a conversation with her. I was like, listen, I only get you on Fridays. You're the only stylist here that has the most experience. Now, I need you to be here on time or at least let me know in advance that you're going to be late so I can prepare for you to be late or prepare to, like, have it whatever I need filled. And because... You had orders that needed to be filled. Yeah, right there. that's what I'm saying. I'm like, you know, if I need, if I have an order that needs to be done, I'm planning for you possibly to be on a Friday to be here to do it. Yeah. She gets all defensive. And I was like, at most jobs, like if you're late, you get a strike, period. Yeah. And she was like, well, if you're going to give me a strike, just give me a strike. And she was just so like defensive with me for no reason. Now, keep in mind, I've known this girl for a long time. I even helped her with EOI last year. So the fact that she was getting defensive with me, almost like she thought that this was coming from a place of shade for me, like telling her she was late, was very gaggy to me. Because I'm like, I'm just telling you you're late. I'm not trying to be shady to you. You're you're her employer. Like, yes. Yeah, like, I'm not in a business here. Correct. So anyway, day moves on. And we're sitting there doing hair and stuff. And we go- somehow got on the subject about why she was late again. And she had brought up, she's like, well, if you would have asked me when I came into work why I was late, because you know that's not like me to be late, you would have known that I was in the hospital last night, and that's why I was late this morning. And I well, said, first of all, first of all, is she only been working with you for a short amount of time? How would you know that? You've only Correct. worked with you two Fridays, bitch. That's what I said. No, I said it just like that. I was like, first, and me and her kind of are able to joke like this. So I was like, First of all, bitch, I said, don't sit here and try to make me feel like shit when you had the opportunity to text me why you were late. When you woke up three minutes and texted me three minutes why you were late. Yeah, because if if she would have told you that she- Hey, I'm going to be late because I was in the hospital. Yeah, you would have been like, hey, take care of yourself. Correct. We'll see you later or don't come in at all (laughs) or whatever. Yeah. Right, but she instead didn't even she was trying that? to make me no, and instead she was trying to make me feel like shit. And I was like, "Don't try to make me out to be this this nasty person that doesn't give a shit about their employer's health." It sounds your health like comes she. First. It sounds like because she didn't offer that information up, she made that shit up while she oh, was there to make you feel bad. Because my my other assistant told me when she when obviously when she left, she was like, "To me, it sounds like she made that made, made that excuse up." And so anyway, you know. We kind of joke. I set the bar straight. I was like, you know, I'm sorry. Whatever. Don't make me feel like shit, though, because you decided to come up with this excuse 30 minutes later for you being late. Yeah. And so then um, the day passes. We get ready to have a lunch break because I'm getting ready to have lunch and stuff. And she comes over. She goes, so question. She goes, how long does your breaks normally go for? 
And I was like, well, I don't really have a time frame of how long, long lunch should be. I was like, if you if you have work to be done, then just eat your lunch at a decent pace and then get back to work. Like I'm not sitting here having a long fucking Christmas dinner yeah. over work, you know? And she's like, oh, well, I was just wondering because you were just so picky about me being late for um, about three minutes late or whatever. And I was like, clearly you have something that's still bothering you. So yeah. let's have a conversation. So right. I'm sitting here eating my salad and she comes over and she's like, well, I just think it's very, um, you know, it's it's very bad, a very bullshit of you to think that like, just because I was three minutes late that you should let me have it the way you did. And I was like, I was like, first off, you were late. I only get you th once, once a week and da, da, da. And she's, girl, it got into this whole thing. We kept going in circles. It was like beating a dead dog. And then finally she brought the dog up- dog that fell on that lady's head. <laughs> Literally. And so she kept going in circles. Clearly you could tell she was harping because she kept bringing it in circles. She brought yep. it up 30 minutes later, then this happens. So then- Well, that, that just, first, before you finish, that just shows she doesn't respect you as a as a, uh, a boss. Like this is your business. It, she doesn't respect you because any normal job that you have a superior, you would never talk to them like that. Right. Like Callie, my other assistant, like, I, you know that we've known her for years. But she she knows there's a line. Like when you work, you respect the person that you're working for, just like I respect them as a, as as a person working with me. Yeah. And so anyway, we kept going in circles, and then she tried to throw Callie in the bus, and she was like, "Oh well, Callie was like eight minutes late last last week, and you didn't say nothing to her." And I said, first off, we're not going to have you bringing someone else into this. It's very unprofessional. And second off, Callie's grandma is dying right now. And she has every excuse to be late, especially when she's communicated that to me. And second, third of all, that has nothing to do with you being late. So do not talk about somebody else. That has nothing right. to do with it. And then she was like, well, I was just trying to tell you this. And she's like, you know, I've been very, very kind to you coming in and working for you. Like she's doing weekend. you a favor. Cause I mean, cause doing me a favor. Cause aren't you, aren't you paying her? Yes. So she was like trying to tell, she was trying to tell me that, um, Basically, That's she was doing a, first of all, that right there. End of story. She right. try, you try to tell me some bitch. No, this is a job. You ain't telling me nothing. Girl, I was just so gagged. And the way that she had spoke to me. And then she got to this, we got to this very much this very ending. And she's like, Well, you know, I I just really think that this is getting in the way of our friendship. And um, I really just think that we should call it today. And let me finish this wig and then we'll move on from this and I won't work with you anymore. And she was, I was like, don't, I said very professionally and nice. I said, I said, so we don't worry about finishing the wig. I was like, I got it. I can finish it. No problem. And she was like, well, I just can't promise that, you know, I'm going to be late and that this is going to happen again. I was like, that's fine. I'll finish the wig. We're good. And she, girl, she grabbed her keys. She did not look back. She walked out and didn't say fuck you, didn't say thank you. She didn't say nothing, girl. She grabbed her shit and hit the road, Jack. And blocked you, honey. No, I blocked her. Oh, you blocked her. <laughs> the one thing, this is, this is the reason why I blocked her, is because I think she's a phony. Because first off, you came to me last year and was up in my house borrowing my drag, asking, my shit, asking for my shit to wear for EOI, and begging to be my drag daughter, asking to take some of my drag and then also you want to sit here and say before you walk out that you think it's best that our friendship um comes first and that you don't let this get in the, in the way but then you leave me like this without saying like hey i'm really sorry like there was no actual cordial goodbye you literally just said out the door yeah it's unprofessional. You don't respect me as a friend. You don't respect my job. You don't respect my bread and butter, which is my baby glitter bomb wigs. Like that shit pays my bills. Yeah. So if you're going to come in here and you're going to disrespect me, fuck you. Yep. Period. I call shade. I call shade. I call shade, bitch. Well, that yeah. was the most passionate I call shade story you've ever shared. <laughs> mine, you know me, bitch. Mine is not as passionate, although very annoying. Um, I was booked in, um, Birmingham, mm -hmm. um, on, oh, I know this. on Saturday. So no, 
Yes, yes, on Saturday. And and then I was there on Sunday to visit my sister. And then I was flying home on Monday. So I always connect from it, mm-hmm. from Birmingham to in Atlanta and then from Atlanta to Orlando. And everybody knows Atlanta's airport is awful. Yeah. And so I, and I was flying Delta, which I normally do because that's my airline. I, 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 no airline is perfect, but Delta is the best one out there in my experience. Oh, and, girl. I, and I'm a million miler with them. So I've flown a lot. And you um, told me that, and I flew through them, flew through them all year when I was EOI, and they're amazing. Yeah. So I get to Atlanta for my connection, waiting, waiting, waiting. We finally board. We're waiting, waiting, waiting. Girl, we wait an hour. They haven't even closed the the door yet. Girl, what is going on? Finally, come to find out, there's a mechanical issue. Okay, we get it. Sometimes that happens. Rather not die in the air, so they make us deboard. And um, they're like, we don't know when there'll be another flight uh, or, or they're trying to get another plane. That's what it was. Yeah. And, but they only had an hour before the next flight out of that gate. So kind of find out they couldn't find another plane. There was only two more flights that were already full at the rest of the day. And everybody on that flight was trying to get to Orlando. So. They offered, but I I was like at the back of the line. There was no way I was getting on those flights. So they offered everybody that couldn't get on the flights um, a reschedule for the next morning and a uh, hotel for the night, which was fine. I mean, they did at least do that, but it was just really annoying that I was like in Atlanta. I'm like, girl, I could have just stayed in Birmingham. Right. Um, But then... On top of that, I finally get back to Orlando today, and my luggage was sent last night on one of the other flights. Okay, yeah. that's fine. But a suitcase that I just bought, literally just bought a month ago. They ruined it. Two of the wheels were broken off of it. Gagged. Did you and I was them? like, Huh? Oh yes. Them? Oh yes. So I went to the uh the Delta uh luggage desk and I was like, look, th- there's two wheels missing off of this brand new suitcase. Like w- um, I need you guys to do something about this. And and because I have flown with them a lot, they have damaged a lot of my suitcases. And we we already know that happens sometimes. Okay, whatever. But their policy is they they uh will replace it basically. Yeah. And so the lady was like trying to be like, well, we no longer uh, replace bags that have anything to do with the handle, the zipper, or the wheels. I'm like, well, bitch, that's the whole fucking suitcase. What do that's you mean? What I'm saying, bitch, what the fuck? Like, are you what do you mean? About? What, what, so, what do you replace then? What do you replace a bag? That's the whole thing. Especially and that, so those are the like, things I, that y'all grab and use. So then I went into my suitcase and I grabbed my Karen wig. I put her on and I said, let me speak to the manager, bitch. <laughs> yes. and, and so then um, she called down a manager. I had to wait forever. Finally, a manager came down. And I said, look, y'all are going to replace this bag. Uh, y'all are going to replace this bag. And so what did they do? They replaced the bag. Did they try to fight you on it? Or did, was the guy just like- The oh, manager no. didn't. That The, the hussy that was- uh, quote unquote, helping me. Girl, she wasn't doing nothing. She was- She wasn't doing she was, shit, bitch. She didn't want to she, lift a finger. She wanted me to get the fuck out of there, bitch. That's what the hell she wanted. She wanted, me to dr- wanted me to deadlift this heavy ass suitcase with two wheels missing. Girl, what I call shade. But I still will fly. <laughs> I'll still fly with Delta. No, they're amazing. The other ones are awful. That has been our episode today. We hope you like it. Uh, um. We'll see you next week. Thank you for listening. Bye.